Hi, everyone. Welcome to my second Surat video tutorial. In my first video, I showed you how to download public available single cell RNA RNA sequencing data and read the data into R as DigiMatrix data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create Surat object from DigiMatrix data, how to view Surat objects in order to know the data information in our Surat object, and finally how to save Surat object. So for today's analysis, we need to note another package called Tidyverse. So let's run library Tidyverse. So uh, as you can see, when we note Tidyverse, we note eight other packages into R. We may don't need all of them, but Tidyverse is a very useful package for beginners because uh, beginners often don't know the specific function of each package. They are unsure which package should be note into R. So if we note both Surat and the Tidyverse uh, into R, we don't need uh, to note more packages for our basic uh, analysis. So you can see two uh, conflicts here. This is because we note two packages before we uh, note the library tidyverse. So as you can see, in the top right hand side window, uh, we have three uh, DG matrix data from a normal human lung tissue. So at the moment, uh, they are in DG matrix format. So now we can uh, use the create surat object function to create our uh, surat objects. So uh, for each object, we keep uh, uh, genes that have expression at uh, least in three cells. So minimum of three is good enough for us to find even very rare cell populations, we also keep cells uh, that express minimum 200 genes. So for cells that have gene expression below 200, we often consider as poor RNA preparation for no cells. We also give a project name uh, for AML1, and the project name is uh, AML1, you don't have to uh, give a project name here, but this project name is important for me to show you data integration in other videos because we have three repeats here. So we can press run to uh, create throughout object AML1. So following the run, you can see uh, in the top right hand side window, uh, AML1 DG matrix data changed into a throughout object. So we can also use the class function uh, to check the data type of NML1. Let's run class NML1. Down here, you can see NML1 now, uh, it is a surat object. So we can uh, continue to create a objective object for AML2 and uh, 
AML3. Now we created three uh, throughout objects. So let's use AML1 as an example again to look at the data information in uh, site AML1. So first, let's just run the name of AML1. You can see down here, AM1 is a, a throughout object. It has 17,574 features. Features are genes. And it has 3,669 samples. Samples are cell numbers. So it is a RNA assay. At the moment, it shows zero variable features. This is because we haven't done any analysis yet. You will see more information here after our analysis. So uh, we can look at the column names and the row names. From the DG matrix data, we knew that uh, column names are buckles and the row names are genes. So if we run uh, column names AML1, you can see down here, it shows uh, the buckles. If we run row names, so down here it shows the genes. So uh, we can also use the view function to see uh, the information in the thread object. The view function will open a new display window in R. For example, uh, we run view AML1. It will open a new display window to show all the general uh, data information of a throughout object. If you click uh, AML1 in the top windows on right hand side, it does the same uh, as the view function. So it opens uh, another windows. If you look, they are the same. We can close one. So let's have a look all the general information for AML1. So we knew uh, it is a RNA assay. It has uh, 17,574 features, 3,669 uh, cells. So uh, here is the metadata. We are going to use the view function to look at the details of metadata later. Later, down here, you see most uh, uh, show zero. This is because we haven't done the analysis for these properties. So now let's go back to use the review function and look at the metadata in details. We can run view the metadata. Now you can see it opens another window. So um, buckles are in this column. We give the uh, short project uh, object uh, project name AML1. So uh, here it will to show the N count RNA and the N features for each cell. For example, uh, in the first cell, uh, we detect 938 uh, genes. 
So the total count for those genes in this cell is two thousand two hundred and fifty two. So you can scroll down to look at the information for each cell. So now um, we can save out the save our threat object. So use the uh, save RDS function. RDS is a very common file to save threat object in R. So we tell R which threat object object we want to save and also tells R where we want to save the object and with the name AML1 RDS. So we can just run to save AML1 RDS in the folder throughout video tutorial on desktop. So uh, you can change this name here, but not the threat object name. For example, we can change uh, here to save AML1 threat object as AML4. So let's run. So um, we can continue to save our object to and three. So now we can open the folder through that video uh, tutorial. You can see uh, R is saving four files here for RDS. So uh, we know uh, AML4 is the same as AML1, so we can delete it. So, okay, uh, I'm going to stop here. Now you can have a go to uh, see have a go to see if you can create your own threat uh, objects. So in my next video, I will show you how to read saved uh, RDS a threat object into R again, and the merge three threat object into one threat object.